Hello everybody! It is Hop Day over at A Cherry on Top. If you are new to my channel, hello, hello, my name is Sarah. I'm showing you all the fun products we're going to be working with today. And they will also be linked up in the comments below. I'll probably also, also mention them as I work on our project. Today's hop focus is layered stencils. I love layered stencils. I have a bunch of different kinds and varieties and I really do enjoy them. So for my layered stencil project today, I'm going to be using um, a brand new release from Waffle Flower Crafts called the Daisy Background Stencil Duo and it's so pretty. So I have a piece of really dark brown cardstock. I've cut it down to A2 card size. I have put the cardstock and my stencil onto my waffle flower grip mat. I love my waffle flower grip mat. It is fabulous. I have the one that will fit inside my Misty, but they come in a multitude of colors or sizes, not colors, but sizes. <laughs> and um, I really, really like it. So for my first, well, for both the stencils, I'm gonna be doing um, stenciling onto dark cardstock. And for these daisies, I'm using my absolute favorite white pigment, pigment ink, which is Hero Hues from Hero Arts, and it's in the unicorn color. This is a beautiful thick pigment ink and you will see as I do this it does not soak into this brown dark brown cardstock you'll be able to see all of the little details I'm going I'm using a blending brush and I'm using a small one now for this layer I could use a large blending brush but the blending brush that I am using this is from Brutus Monroe and it is specifically in my craft room, my dedicated white pigment ink brush. So whether I'm using the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink, or I also have pigment ink here from Brutus Monroe, whichever pigment, white pigment ink I am using, this is the brush that I am using to put the white pigment ink on because I don't want it to get any color in it. I don't want it to get smushed up. I don't want to accidentally use it with another kind of ink. So that means that when I'm doing something like this where I could use a larger brush, we're using the small one. But look at how beautiful this ink goes over this stencil. And also look how cute this stencil is. It's so cute. I'm gonna make two cards using this stencil today, but I'm going to make the two cards very different so that I can really show you how you can use the stencils in different ways and how different um, techniques will give you a different look with the stencil. So I'm just gonna, here's the big reveal, ta-da! So I'm just gonna pull that brown paper off, pull that brown cardstock off, and you can see how well-loved my grip mat is. And then I'm gonna put a second piece of cardstock onto the grip mat and do another card panel right away. The layer stencils from Waffle Flower are super easy to use. They have little marks on them. They have a mark that says one and a mark that says two. Very, very easy to use. So I'm just gonna line this up. And the grip mat also has like um, a mark so that you can line the paper and then you can line the stencil up don't turn it upside down like I did that was goofy but you can see here it's gonna fit real nice so I'm just gonna fidget with this just a little bit I'm being overly picky about this because um, we're doing the daisy centers and I want them to be like exactly where they need to be for the yellow daisy centers I'm using fossilized amber distress oxide ink and again I'm using the little brushes because I'm actually going to need them. This stencil does both the leaves and it does the centers of the flowers. And so I want to use a little brush to be able to get in here and do the centers of the flowers one color and then the leaves another color. 
for the leaves, I am using Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide Ink. And I'm using Distress Oxide Ink because the Distress Oxide Ink has that chalky finish. And it also has the properties of pigment ink, which means it's going to sit on top of this dark cardstock. It's not going to suck all the way in. So you'll see when I lift up my pattern, you will be able to uh, see the daisies and leaves and all of that. Just as an aside, I let these two card bases with the pigment ink dry for a little bit of an extra long time to make sure it was really, really dry. And that way I'm not going to smear the ink because pigment ink does take a little bit longer to dry. So now we have both of our panels here and I'm going to show you how we're going to use them. So the first panel, I'm actually going to cover up all of my yellow <laughs> Distress Oxide inked areas <laughs> because you know that's how I roll. I am going to add little Nouveau Drop centers to each of the daisies. This is going to provide and some texture. Now for this card, this stenciled panel is going to be the star of the show. For our second card, we're going to let the stenciled panel be more of a background element, something a little bit more rustic, a little more distressed. But for this card, we want these daisies to shine. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Nouveau Drops. It's gonna give it some depth, dimension, texture, color. Uh, and then as we continue to build the card, you'll see that these little pearls are going to add such a sweet look to our card. I am using Auburn Pearl Metallic Nouveau Drops. Now for our next panel, this one's gonna get 3D embossed. So this embossing card, uh, this embossing folder that I'm using, you're gonna see me use it on my Technique Tuesday video this week, this uh, month during March as well. Um, and I think it might be the coolest coolest embossing folder I've ever owned like it is so amazing so it's from Sizzix it's called lumber and it's a 3d embossing folder so I have a mini mister here it's filled with water I am spritzing that water all over that card panel and then I'm going to emboss it Keep in mind we use Distress Oxides and we use pigment inks. The Distress Oxide will react to the water I just spritzed on it. I'm going to put it through my Sizzix switch, which um, FYI turned a year old in December and is still working fabulously. I have seen online where some people have been having problems with theirs. I have had zero issues with my Sizzix switch, zero. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I know it might be a little hard to see the embossing on this card panel, but it is there. And also the water did react to the um, Distress Oxide ink. So my card panel now has that rustic look to it. So it's a little bit, it looks a little bit like somebody painted on like a wooden board or plank or fence or something and it looks so cool okay so now we're gonna die cut i got this fun pearlescent cardstock from the shop it's from tonic and then i also have the um some yellow and dark dark green cardstock and i die cut a bunch of adorable daisies from the Layered Daisy Dye, which is also from Waffle Flower Crafts. And I made oodles of daisies. Look how pretty they are. I love these daisies. I love both these cards that I made. I think that they're gorgeous. I just, I love this stencil set and I love these daisies. I was super excited to play with them. Um, and I made cards because I just didn't have a photograph that I felt would um, would work with all the daisies, but that's okay. Uh, for this distressed panel, so we have stenciled it with the daisy stencil. We have 
embossed it and kind of distressed it up a little bit with our lumber embossing folder. Now I'm coming in with some vintage photo distress oxide ink and I'm hitting the edges. And again, that's because I want this stenciled panel to take on a more back seat role. I don't want it to be right there in front. I want to have some, I want it to be more of the background and then have our pretty daisy die cuts on top. I'm going to do three pretty daisies and I'm going to just create a little cluster of the daisies and the dark green leaves and then I can just kind of pop them around. Now, if you are a scrapbooker, number one, you can make, use these die cuts and make lots of gorgeous daisies as embellishments on a scrapbook layout because these daisies are like the perfect flower size for a scrapbook page. They're not too big, they're not too small. And if you were to cut them in different colors, like if you don't like, if you don't want to be always making white daisies with yellow centers, you could make pink flowers with the brown centers and then they would look like echinacea flowers. You could do black eyed Susans and do, you know, a dark center with a yellow outside. Sky is the limit. You can make any kind of flower you want. Another thing you could do is you could take the flower petal die and once you've die cut them, you could put those flower petals through and with an embossing folder so then you have more texture and more fun on your flowers. This is a really, really great die set no matter what kind of paper crafting you do. And then for the layered stencil, you could do a panel of the layered daisies and then you could punch or die cut them out in circles or hexagons or um, you could die cut them and make tags and then you would have, or um, you could do labels. The sky's the limit of what shapes you could cut them out of. And then you would have these beautiful, bright, pretty daisy embellishments to go with your daisy flowers on your scrapbook layout. So the first card I did, I like kind of clustered all the daisies in the middle. And then for the second card, I'm going to do two in the upper right hand corner and one at the bottom. The reason why is because I want more of the stencil to be showing on this card. I don't want that stencil to just be a little background element. This is the stencil that we added the um, Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, or the new Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, listen to me, the Nouveau Drops and the Auburn Pearl. So I want this stenciling to be more visible. I want it to be more part of the card. Um, I want you to be able to see the pretty texture and the pretty colors and all of those things. I lost some video footage, so sorry, but here are my finished cards. I went ahead and added just a little sentiment with Honeybee Stamped Mini Messages die set. I die cut the little um, sentiments I and like. And here is the close-up of this embossing folder. How gorgeous is this? You guys, this is my favorite embossing folder I have ever used. I adore it. It looks so cool. I hope you have all had a wonderful day. And I totally forgot to tell you this, but if you've made it this far in the video, leave a comment in the description box below so you can hop along with all the other design team members that are cherry on top and you can leave a comment on all the videos and then you will be entered into a random drawing for a $15 gift certificate. And you will also find in the description box below links to all of these gorgeous daisy supplies from Waffle Flower as well as any other supplies that I used that are still available over in the shop. I'm sorry I didn't mention that at the beginning, but if you made it this far, then you guys got a cookie and ta-da, now you know all the 411. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you again soon. Bye.